Chapter 7, or Module 7 Review, Board of Grade, into Math, Concepts and Skills. What division problem and answer does this quick picture represent? How do you know? So, basically, we need to add our place values, correct? How many, do I have any hundreds? No, I don't have any flats. How many longs do I have? Three, right? So, that would be three in the third spot, or three. Okay, then what about um, small cubes or one? I have four, eight, 12, 14, right? So I put a three there. So this would be three tens plus, I don't know why I did that. Three tens plus, you told me 14 ones, right? And can that 14 ones regroup to another 10? Yeah, so that actually equals what? 44, right? Okay, so I have 44 as my total. So that would be at the beginning divided by how many groups? Three groups equals, and what was in each group? Yeah, 14, right? Because one long, one 10. Four ones, and then my remainder would be two of two ones. Use tool divide. Name the strategy or tool you will use to solve the problem, then explain your choice, and then find your answer. Okay, so you can either do like a picture, right? You can do the house, right? In standard form. Okay, so you have a couple of different um, ways you can do it. Let's go ahead and do the first one just in a house. Okay. So 72 divided by 6. How many times does 6 go into 7? One time. So 1 times 6 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 2. How many times does 6 go into 12? 2 times. 2 times 6 is 12. And nothing left over. Do I have anything else to bring down? No. So 12 is my answer. All right, number three, let's go ahead and do the house for that one too. Um, or what else could we do? Can we, can we do partial quotient? Yeah. yeah, okay. So if we did partial quotient, we know we're gonna take something times eight, right? So what could I do? So, something times 8 to get us, can we do 80? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what would I take times 8 to get 80? 10, right? Okay, something times 8 to get, what's going to get me closest? So, what's left over? 15, right? Okay, so can I take it times 2? No. No, because that's 16, right? I could do times 1. And that would get me eight. And then, so now, what do I have left over? Seven. seven. So can I do anything with that? I would have 11 remainder seven. Okay, so there's our partial quotient way. And then let's draw a picture. So for this next one, how many flats do I need to draw? None, because there isn't any flats, right? There's no hundreds, right? How many longs do I need to draw? Three, because I have three tens. How many small cubes? Two. Okay. Now, how many circles? Seven groups, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, do I have enough longs to go in there? No. So I need to convert all of those longs into small cubes. Right? So 30 small cubes. So we regrouped our 30 into um, 30 small cubes. And then now we're going to break those small cubes into each one. So I have 32. So I'm going to go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we used 20 of the small cubes in each one of those, and then we had four left over, which we knew could not go into each of those seven groups. So how many small cubes do we have in each one, guys? Four, and then remainder four. 
Number five, so we are using 356 feet to decorate four picture frames. Choose them the same number of beads on it, each frame. How many beads does Luann use for each frame? So we're going to circle 356 feet, four picture frames. How many beads does Luann use for each frame? So what is going to be my problem? 356 divided by 4. So 356 divided by 4. Can 4 go, or, yeah, can 4 go into 3? No. No. So I move it in, so I put a 0 to hold my spot. Can 4 go into 35? Yes. How many times? 8 times. 8 times 4 is what? 32. So I'm going to take 35 minus 32. And what do I get? 3. And then bring down my 6. Okay. How many times can 4 go into 36? 9 times. 9 times 4 is? 36. And we have nothing left over. Do we have anything else to bring down? No. So our answer is 89. So letter B. Okay, so on the back, just to keep us with some time, so 6, we're going to do 6, 10, and 8. So you guys can nicely, with a simple X, mark off 7, 9, and 11. Now remember, not two times, this will be the same. We're going to go back to them. They're easy to erase. All right. So if this is not enough space for you, because even for me trying to write on the board, it's going to be kind of tight. What can you get? A piece of notebook paper or grid paper, right? Because grid paper helps us keep our columns in line. Okay. So can five go into two? Into two. Nope. So I put a zero. Can five go into 23? Yes. Four times, right? So I put a four up above the three. Four times five is? 20. So 23 minus 20 is 3. Bring down my 1. 5 can go into 31. 6 times. 6 times 5 is 30. 31 minus 30 is, is remainder 1. Okay. Do I have anything else to bring down? No. So like I just said, that becomes my remainder. Now I'm going to check it. So what do I do to check it? 46 times 5, right? So 5 times 6 is 0, carry the 3. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. Now I have to add the remainder. I can't just leave it behind. So 1, 3, 2. Does this number match that number? Yes, so my answer is 46 remainder 1. Okay? All right, number 8. Can 8 go into 1? No. Nope, so I put a 0. Can 8 go into 16? Yes, 2 times. So I put a 2. 2 times 8 is 16. Nothing left over. I bring down my 5. Now, can 8 go into 5? No, so I put a, mm, I do not put a remainder five. What, I put a zero. So then do we account for the one spot? No, and then is that going to get us off on our answer? Yes, so I have to put a zero here to hold my spot, and zero times eight is zero, and then I put the five. Now that becomes my remainder because I don't have anything else to bring down, correct? So you guys have to make sure you are holding all your place values accountable. If you don't, then you're not going to get the right answer. So how do I check it? 20 times 8. So 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 2 is 16. And then I need to add the 5. So 5, 6, 1. Does this match that? Yes. So... 20 remainder 5 is my answer. Okay, number 10, 6,259 divided by 6. Can 6 go into 6? Yes. yes, one time. So, 1 times 6 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 
Zero, and I bring down the two. Pin six go into two. No. So I have to hold that place value and put a zero. Zero times six is zero. So two minus zero is two. And I bring down the five. And make sure you guys are using the arrows to hold your place values. Okay. So how many times does six go into 25? Four times. So I'm going to put a four above the five. Mm. Okay, 4 times 6 is 24. So 25 minus 24 is 1. Bring down the 9. 6 can go into 19 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. And 19 minus 18 is 1. Do I have anything else to bring down? No. So I have remainder 1. To check it, 1,043 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 1 is, so put the 5. Carry the 2. 6 times 0 is, plus 2 is 2. 6 times 1 is, hey, okay. now what do I need to do? Add my remainder. So 9, 5. Two six. So six thousand two hundred fifty nine is my answer. So is one thousand forty three remainder one? Yes. Correct. All right. Go ahead and mark it. Number twelve. Which statements about the division problem are true? Select all the correct answers. So we're gonna work it out over here to the side, so then we can see what would all apply. So we went ahead and worked it out, and we got five hundred seventy one. So, what would we mark? Would A work the first digit of the whole number quotient is in the thousands place? Did we start in the thousands place? Yeah. Nope, we started in the hundreds, so that would not work. There is no remainder. That one's correct, because we don't have a remainder. You need to regroup thousands as hundreds to divide. So, did we have to move from the thousands to the hundreds? Yeah. Yes. So, whole number quotient has three digits. Yeah. Yes, because does a zero at the front count? Yeah. No. So there is three digits in our quotient for our answer. You need to write a zero in the whole number quotient. No, there is a zero, but is it amongst the other three numbers? No. So technically, does that zero, if you would go to write the answer, would you add it? No. Okay, it's not needed. All right, number 13. A baker makes eight dozen muffins. She puts five muffins in each box to sell. How many boxes can she fill? So this is our multi-step. So eight dozen muffins, five muffins in each box. How many boxes can she fill? So there's um, a dozen in each one. Okay. So what do I need to find first? Do we know how many total muffins they have? No. So we need to take 12 times what? How many? Eight dozen. So times eight. You should know your multiples of 12. What is 12 times 8? 96. Okay, and if you did work it, you could add a 1 here and get 96, but you should know your multiples of 12. Okay, so there's 96 muffins, right? Okay, total. And then she puts 5 muffins in each box. Okay, so, so 96 divided by Five. So how many times does five go into nine? One time minus five. Nine minus five is four. Bring down the six. Five into forty-six. Nine times. Nine times five is forty-five. Forty-six minus forty-five is one. So our answer is 19 or neither one. And it wanted, they want to know how many boxes can she completely fill. So would I use the quotient, the remainder, or fill up one? I, I, I just use the quotient because they want to know how many are full. So there will be one left over, right? But we only have 19 boxes that are full. So make sure you guys ask yourself that all the time. Quotient, remainder, or go up one. 